In the past several decades, post-mortem brain research has made great progress towards understanding and finding cures for debilitating brain disorders, such as schizophrenia, Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's, and many others. This research has brought us closer to unlocking the mysteries of the brain. Yet progress is inhibited by the long-standing shortage of donated brain tissue. Since 1978, the Harvard Brain Bank has been at the forefront of meeting this challenge. The Harvard Brain Bank is the largest brain tissue research center on the planet, enabling groundbreaking neuroscience research around the world. Welcome to the Harvard Brain Tissue Resource Center, located at McLean Hospital in Belmont, Massachusetts. The Brain Bank, as it is affectionately called, is funded by the National Institutes of Health to serve as a national resource for the collection and distribution of high-quality postmortem brain tissue from patients with both neurological and psychiatric disorders. This tissue is distributed to neuroscientists throughout the United States and abroad and is used to help them learn about the causes and cures of severe neurological and psychiatric illnesses. Today we're going to take you on a tour of the brain bank. You will have the opportunity to meet our staff a group of warm, dedicated, and uh, highly qualified individuals. They will show you what they do on a day-to-day -day basis to allow the brain bank to accomplish its mission. The process begins when families discuss making this very important donation. And, um, I talked to Greg, my son, and uh, my husband, and they thought about it for a while, and then they signed up to it. So that they have the information at their homes, and uh, they've already thought through it. They've discussed it among themselves, and the family has come to a consensus that this is an important thing to do. We all knew that we wanted to do that, and uh, so we all felt very good about it. But even then, it's still very difficult for them. At the time of death, the next step is to place a phone call to the Harvard Brain Bank. Harvard Brain Tissue Resource Center, good afternoon. The legal next of kin can get in touch with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Don Chapman and Pat Trujopoulos are the first contact for family members. Oh, my condolences to you and your family. They have in common the tremendous empathy for bereaved family members and an ability to get everything organized in spite of the fact that uh, these pe people are dealing with uh, a dreadful um, situation. The difficult part is, you know, when your spouse or your loved one dies. And when we could see that this was happening and that there was no hope, uh, I asked Greg, that's my son, if he would go home and get his dad's card. And he did. All you have to do is call the brain bank and they'll walk you through the whole process. And they did. And it went just very smoothly. All right, so he is registered with us and we have a pathologist arranged. Postmortem consent must be given before a brain can be received at the brain bank. And take the tissue to us. Do you have any questions as we speak? And they, they get involved all the necessary personnel um, that will contribute to a successful brain donation. I'm a funeral director and I have worked with McLean's Hospital for the past 20 something years in helping them with tissue retrieval. Um, it's a misconception, the fact that donating a brain, a funeral director cannot have an open casket. It is not true. There is no problem whatsoever. Recognizing the mandate to heal is a fundamental religious value. Brain donation is supported by most major religions. Donations have come from people representing all major faiths, as well as from every state in the country. We try to go out and try to meet a funeral director between one to two hours, no matter where it is in the state, or if we have to, we'll go to New Hampshire, Rhode Island, or wherever it may be to help a family. When donated brains first arrive at the brain bank, they are brought to the laboratory. One half of the brain is put in a chemical called formalin. But it preserves the brain in a way that allows the neuropathologist to do a very detailed evaluation. The other half of the hemisphere is cut in cortical sections and is frozen in these special containers. Then this tissue is packed and put away into freezers that you'll be able to see next door. This tissue will sit in the freezers until a distributive diagnosis is given. Tim uh, Wheelock is the neurohistology uh, technician and he prepares 
the tissue for the neuropathology report. Our neuropathologist has cut out small pieces of, of brain tissue. Now we can actually go ahead and embed the tissue in wax so as to turn the uh, tissue really in, into a wax block. I see now what we have, we have repeating sections of this brain area. And that's uh, what you have as a finished product from the cutting. We, we take the wax out of the tissue and then stain them and then produce this set of stained slides that is then read by the pathologist combined with what they see on the gross examination in the dissection room coupled with any clinical notes they put all that together into a neuropath report. I'm uh, one of the neuropathologists and I look at the, each brain that comes through and uh, make a neuropathological diagnosis and this is necessary in order to correctly classify each brain for future research use. Uh, we also write out a detailed report that we send back to the families uh, so that they know uh, what was going on in, in the brain of the person who died. Well, it, it makes you feel good that, um, th that you're just not sending this brain into a void that there's actually some people looking at it and analyzing it and and even though they divide it up and send it to different places in the country they have done a really good analysis of it and can tell you what's present and what's not present so that that's very uh, comforting. The neuropathology report is absolutely essential to confirm the diagnosis for the neurological disorders. There are classic histopathologic changes that one can identify and our neuropathologist does a very detailed uh, report to ensure that when we say a, a case has Parkinson's disease that it truly has Parkinson's disease or if we say it has Huntington's disease that indeed it is a Huntington's disease case. The report is then modified for privacy. Any information that is given to researchers has uh, had all personal identifying information removed. All this information is put into a database. That database is open to researchers who need a special password to get in there. Researchers from all over the United States and abroad send in their requests. The Harvard Brain Bank receives requests not only from researchers in universities, but also hospitals, private industry, and pharmaceutical and biotech companies. Our main goal here is to collect uh, tissue for research for uh, patients with psychiatric disorders and neurological cases and also neuroma controls. Uh, we also get Alzheimer's disease cases. This place is open 24 hours a day. We cover the whole entire country and this tissue is sent to researchers all over the country and also overseas. People need to apply to get tissue from this institution. Later on, um, you'll be able to talk with uh, uh, Mr. Fernandez, who is the person in charge to do all the dissection about uh, brain tissue. When the uh, brains they get here, we keep the privacy of the donor, which means any research who will look for tissue, the only thing they will get is a brain number. Um, all this work is done here any time of the day or the night. This work is very unique. It's, um, not too many institutions like this. This is the biggest uh, brain bank on the whole entire planet. And our goal is trying to provide this tissue to researchers so they'll be able to come up with solutions and new treatment for people. We also are very um, involved to trying to collect control cases because researchers we know a control case, they will be able to compare the results. So from there, we then do queries on our database, find out um, what tissue we have fitting the researcher's demographics restrictions on either age, sex, or post-mortem interval, which tells us exactly which freezer and what box it's in. That way, it's, it's a very efficient and quick way of locating and maintaining 6,000 brains. So once that is all done, then we get these cases out and lay them out and cut out the, uh, the regions that the researchers are looking for.